This is in-depth study of the Christ, the propitiation, the begotten Son, the Law, the the Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, the One, the True Jesus Christ. Here on Understanding the Bible Radio On Screen Study Facebook Live YouTube Live Google Plus Live On Screen Undeniable Facts of Scripture You might want to share this one You might want to share it right now You can hit your like buttons You can hit your hate buttons Angry buttons This is the deal People are saved Saying that you know Christians, whatever, whoever, Jehovah's Witnesses, whatever, whatever. Uh, you know, Muslims, we're doing what God's will is, we're doing it, we're doing it. With it. Are you truly saved? <clears throat> I'm gonna be bringing it up on screen, definitions into Lanier. Gonna bring it up to you, show you exactly what it's going to state by way of scripture. Letting you know exactly how you are saved. Period. Put it out there. I'm going to do it, man. Right on screen. Undeniable facts of scripture. Be patient. I know you, you know, come on, man. Come on. Hurry up. Just be patient. We're going to get it. Hit the follow button. Let you know when we're on. There's nothing to order or buy here. There are no books. There are no DVDs, CDs, love offering gifts, fund me, pal, PayPal, fund me. None of that. It's free right here on your device. Understanding the Bible radio. I'm Ron Saxton. We have Helena Banks here also. Helena. The question is that many people even have in their minds. You can ask them, are you saved? And they, yes, I'm saved. You know, you might ask them, how do you know you're saved? Helena, what you got on this? I'm going to let I'm gonna give you, give it to you first as, as, as usual. <laughs> and, and then we're going to jump in. Well, it will be a question within a question. You say, are you really saved? And I will say, do you really have his spirit? Shramans 8 and okay. 9. Do you have his spirit? I'm sorry, I got the laptop sound going. Okay. All right. Yeah, you mentioned Romans 8 and 9. Now, here's the deal. Romans 8 and 9. This is the parts that all the law doers, Old Testament... Uh, true tribes of Israel, Jehovah's Witness, Seven Day Adventists, Sabbath law keepers, doers, uh, Bible uh, adherers. They make the Bible God. They make Him God. Uh, um, their praise, their worship, their pastors, their whatever, their works themselves, what they do, you know. Uh, the thing that indicates that they are saved. That's what they do. I've done it. I'm admitting it. I'm, I'm not dogging anybody. I'm right there with you. If we're going to look at our scriptures, because usually all of those denominations and religions that I mentioned, they have a book. They have a book, right? And we look at that book and then we want to follow what the book is saying. Other than what it's really saying, turning to him. That's what it's doing. It's pointing towards him. So Romans 89 now. But you are not in the flesh. All those all those things that I mentioned, the religions and dominations and following Bible other than what the Bible is telling you and pointing you to. And I'm going to tell you why in a minute is it's carnal. It's a fleshly thing. You're doing it based on what you do. Based on what I do, I'm saved. That's how I know I'm saved. OK, no problem. Are you truly? We're going to find out. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. It didn't say religion, denomination, works. It didn't say uh, 
uh, none of that, uh, not sinning. It didn't say that. It said, but in the spirit. Okay. If so, if. See, that's a big word right there. Because he may not know. He's writing a letter to them. If so, that the spirit of God dwell in you. See that? If so, that the spirit of God, God dwell in you. Now, if, if any man, if any human being, woman, man, child, whatever, have not the spirit of Christ. You notice they're there the same. I say that all the time. They're in the same actual sentence. Sentences. Got a period in here. He, that man, is none of his. None. If you don't have the spirit. Now, we're going to break it down. Be patient. Look, take a look. Take a look. Now, Jesus talks about, let's just type in saved. Jesus even breaks down in detail. You will not see death. You will have eternal life. He that believeth. What do we hear? What do we hear? We hear stuff like what? Believe on Jesus Christ. Say this prayer. And you're saved. Okay. That what did what what do we need for the south? Are you truly saved? Now, Jesus says here in Matthew 10, 20, 22, and ye shall be hated of all men for my sake. How can you get rid of the haters when you're going to be? He said that the total opposite. You're going to be hated of all men for his name's sake, for his authority's sake, the name's sake. But he that endureth the hatred, see, to the end shall be saved. That's Jesus talking in red. And the disciples even asked, then who can be saved? All right. They even asked him that Matthew 19, 24. But he that shall endure unto the end shall be saved. What is saved? 4982. What is he talking about here? Let's listen to the Greek. Strong's G, 4982. Sozo. Sozo. All right. KJV translates it. Look, save, make whole, heal, be whole. That's the translation into our language. But let's take a look at what the Greek is saying. The outline, to save, keep safe and sound, to rescue from danger or destruction. That's one main definition. We're going to go into the sub definitions of this main definition. One from injury or peril to save a suffering one from perishing one suffering from disease to make well heal restore to health to preserve one who is in danger of destruction to save or rescue to save in the technical biblical sense. Now, here's the other one. OK, now we just see how this is all really here on Earth. That's what that all is. And it says nothing about heaven, nothing about eternal kingdom and the eternal life. Nothing about that. It's talking, that's talking about everything here in the body on earth right here. Here is the one that says in a technical biblical sense, negatively, negatively to deliver from the penalties of the messianic judgment. To save from the evils which obstruct the reception of the messianic deliverance. Now, this is all found in the detailed page, which we're going to look at in a moment. And you've got uh, Strong's Concordance, which is not a lexicon. Basically, he's talking about all of the earthly stuff. Didn't even mention this. You notice that. Okay. So now we're going down into the Thayer's lexicon, which you can order today and have a paperback book, hard copy. This is on blueletterbible.org. This is not my website and they don't pay me to use it. Okay. This is just live online and it's free. 
for you to be able to use it because ministers are doing this same thing. Pastors, ministers, they're using these same things to get their sermons together and they don't come out and tell you exactly everything that it says because the Bible what, is translated. The Bible, it's uh, for uh, G4982. The Bible is translated <clears throat> from the Hebrew, Aramaic, and Koine Greek manuscripts of scripture into English and they compiled it in a in a book. All of these books or they compiled them into one book and call it a Bible. Okay, so if they went if they did that from those languages and those manuscripts, we need to go back to see exactly what it meant. Why? Because the father is doing what? He's inspiring man to write those manuscripts down. That's what he did. We, we, we'll pull out that scripture in a minute. God has can what, what is it's a beeping. God has what's that beeping? That's not me. I'm trying to I'm trying to turn the alarm off. Oh alarm. okay. Oh okay. God right. has inspired man to write it down. Now we'll take that. All scripture is inspired of who? God the Father. Okay. So that we can't get around that. So that's this is why I do this to go backward to get the true definitions of those languages to show it on screen. So this is undeniable. You can find out if you've been deceived or not. If so, go ahead and be mad and upset about it, but just jump on to the to the real deal now. OK, that's all this is. So let's see what we can find. Perfect. It's we starting out a future. Let's see future. This is Greek term. These Greek terms. I can't read them. Uh, Eros. Aorist. Perfect. Passive. Present. But imperfect. These are the different uh, Greek words in the tenses. They're using them. They're perfect. Three person singular. OK, they got scripture references there. All right. All right, and they have the translator reference, uh, uh, translator references that you can look up further and go further if you want. Uh, so let's go. Let's see here. What do, we, what do we have? Where are we at? Safe and sound. Okay, that's what safe and sound. Uh, let's see. To save, yeah, keep what? safe and sound. I'm at uh, I'm at the very first paragraph. Now I'm getting ready to go to a a universally. Uh, from the injury apparel. Okay, we just saw that outline there. You got your scriptures right here. You see them right there. Uh, others understanding as it is including spiritual healing. Spirit. My spirit does need to be healed. As a matter of fact, it needs to be brought to life. Because I'm dead. And my life is hid with Christ in God. The Father. Alright, so there's the scriptures refer referencing that definition. To preserve one who is in danger. Okay, you got your scriptures there with the genitive place to bring uh, safe forth from all right you got jude from the peril of this hour that very moment okay with the genitive state of this greek term here all right uh so we're getting deeper now we get into that bible one just want to see if there's anything we're missing in the outline and the technical bi biblical says here it is negatively to deliver from the penalties of the mosaic judgment which we know is what sin from the messianic, the the not the mosaic, messianic. I'm sorry. Sin, all have sinned and come short of the glory. Correct, right? Because there's only one that is the glory of the Father, and that is His begotten Son. Okay, always has been, always will be. All right. So the penalty for all of us is condemnation, damnation. All right. To save from the evils of the obstruct of the reception of the messianic deliverance. To save us from the evil one. That's in the Lord's Prayer. Okay, Matthew 6. Evil, evils, and ourselves. Even our carnality. To forgive. Well, the, the sin needs to be forgiven. My works does not erase sin. My good work. Now, I, you know, I got saved when I was 20. So I was going to, if I can just continue on and do more good than I did from 1 to 20, I'll be good. Now, 20 to whatever, 50, 60, 70, whenever I die, he says, hey, you did more good than, than sinning, so we're done. No, that's not really the deal. That's not how that works. It's, it's because you have his spirit, period. 
When you become his, you're made new in him now. Not you got new everything, new body, new all of this. Everything is new and you just a baby again. No, no, it's spirit from the punitive wrath of God at the judgment of the last day. Everybody wants that. Nobody wants to perish in the last day. That's that, that goes without saying. All right. Positively. First, we had the negatively positively to make one a partaker of the salvation by who? Bible. Going to church. What religion I selected doing the Sabbath, keeping the law. No, it's the it's it's to make one a partaker of the salvation by there's only one that is made by. And that is the begotten son inside human flesh, which we know as Christ, period. Period. Doesn't matter how much scripture I know because and how many definitions I know because the devil knows them all already. That is not important. Okay. Uh, as opposed to this Greek term, which see hints are interchanged in Matthew, Mark, Luke. So you got the scriptures there. So this Greek term and this Greek term, John three seventeen. All right. Which is for God. So sent for God sent not his son in the world to condemn, but that the world through him. Look at the last three words might be saved. He didn't say that they would be. He said they might be through him through him okay that's very important now are you saved now that's very that's the one you need to watch watch that one watch that one but that the world through him might be through him might be saved that's very important because there's a key scripture you're going to see about whether or not you're saved since salvation begins in this life in deliverance from error and corrupt notions that that's before you even start acting that's a thought. That's where it starts. In moral purity, in pardon of sin, and the blessed peace of a soul that is what? Reconciled to God the Father. Now it's reconciled because that's where the souls, that's where our souls came from. They originated from Him. But now it's reconciled. See? That's how. But on the visible return of Christ from heaven, Revelation. We uh, will he perfected in the consummate blessings of this Greek term here. We can understand why this Greek term is spoken of in some passages as a present possession in others as a good yet future as a blessing beginning or begun on earth. OK, they've got all the scriptures there. All right. Dative of the instrument here, let's see uh, this Greek term here, uh, aorist of the time when they turned to who? Christ, not the pastor, not the book, not not works, not hiding and, and, and being prepared for the end of the world. That's not it. Not your acts of love towards your enemies. That's not it. The reason why you're doing that is because you have him in you and you can love your enemies. That's why you you're loving now. It's not the action that saves you. It's the you having him in you that you're now able to love the transformation of mind to him. That's what to his mind. That's what the father's doing. That's the G1504. All you have to do. Is Google G1504. And you will get the true definition. Now, are you truly saved? Are you truly saved? That's Ephesians 2.5. We're going to bring that one up because we're almost done here on this. Passive by a pregnant construction that's in the grammar, y'all, in, in the grammar. To save and transport into. Um, let's see. Many examples of this construction are given in pass out. That's something we don't have uh, available right now to even look at. I'd have to look at that before I brought it up. But Jesus talks about it. Believing on him. We just did the believing yesterday. Do you truly believe? All that believe, believe. We've shown it. We broke down believe. Okay. We broke that down yesterday. You should have a, conv it should get to the point where you, you hear it. You say, yes, I do believe that. And then you begin to trust him. And then you get a conviction and you commit to him. Not in say Bible. I said him. I didn't say Facebook messages and, and, 
and 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 fighting for it and defending the faith. No. Politics and the president that has nothing to do with him. He's like that was. I'm not dealing with that. I'm, I'm far above that. I want you to come up here. I don't want you to stay down there. You got to know it now. They all may be one as that. This is John 17. Very good chapter to study. That they all. He's praying to the Father that they all may be one as Thou, Father, art in me and I in Thee. That they may also be one in us. Are you truly saved? Are you are you are you focused on him and his spirit? Not doing something for you. Not doing something for you. Just on him. Period. And if if all he is to you is uh a blessing maker or a, a way maker uh in this earth and, and a protector in this earth, and he's he's just a good benefit for me to be able to exist here. You got it wrong. That's not right. I used to think that now. I'm telling you, I used to. No, do you think of him? Do you tell him to reveal his son in you? Form your son in me. More of your son's knowledge. That's what we should be growing in. First Peter. That the world may, that see, may, that he didn't say that they would. He said may believe. That's a choice you make. That thou hast sent me. Believe. That, that they would come to a conviction. And then commit to us. So that now. You can truly save them. Oh I just believe. Now I know I'm saved. Because I believe he died for my sins. The devil knows he died. For your sin. That's a, what's, the, you know, what, what's the big thing. Here's the deal. Are you even when we were now here's this is Paul, a Hebrew tribe of Benjamin, Hebrew Israelite, whatever you want to call him against Christ before he received his spirit in him. After he receives his spirit, he starts to speak of Christ and then Christ also begins to give him detailed knowledge about how you are saved. Even we quickened even we were dead in sins yes we were until he he does this he does what quickened us together with christ the father is doing this by grace you are saved now here's the deal here's the deal what is the grace are you listening to joseph prince tell you what grace is believe me he's telling you what grace is not is what he's doing there's no way you're going to be going all these years on grace and you just flowing all these years on grace and talking about healing and all the other different things and all. That's not the grace. But he never told me. I never heard him say anything what it really was. But we're going to show it right now by way of the Greek lexicon before he was born. I was born. You and your grandmother and grandfather and everybody, you know, they were born. This was given to the Greeks to write down by who? God the Father that we translated into our English. That's what we're going to do. We're going to show it right here. 2.8 For by grace you are saved. What is this grace? Here's the I know people of other people have seen it. This is how you're saved. If this is not happening Strong you got a problem. G 5485 Charis. You have a problem. Charis. You have a problem. If you, this is not happening to you, I'm not talking about being positive. That's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about that. Hoping for the best. No. We're talking about this goodwill, loving kindness, and favor. I'm not talking about the, the earthly favor. I'm talking about of the merciful kindness by which God is doing something. He's exerting his holy influence upon souls. He's turned. He's the one that turns you to Christ, not the Bible. He turns you to Christ, not church going and what religion and home church I'm going to go to. That's not what he's turning you to. He's turning you to his son in human flesh, the Christ. His begotten spirit, son in human flesh. And then what does he do? Look, he keeps you there in his son. He strengthens you. He increases you. 
in Christ's faith, knowledge, affection, and kindles you to the exercise of Christ, his son's virtues. He, he doesn't care about how many scriptures I memorize. He doesn't care about how many, how many definitions I memorize. He's only caring about the one thing that he knows that I need that only I can get from him. Salvation is in his son. He put it there. He declared it and decreed it. Is he influencing your soul? If so, what is he influencing you in? Is he influencing you in fulfilling your dream? If he is, that's not God the Father. I'm sorry, it's not. Is he influencing you in believing very strongly that the world will come to peace before the revelation of Jesus Christ that God the Father has commissioned already? And he's not going to change it because everybody got along and held hands and said, we just love everybody. No, it's never going to happen because he's already told us that they're not going to do that. That's not what they're going to do. They're going to get worse. Things are going to get worse. And the world is going, the earth is going to get worse. It's going to happen because I need to reveal my son to every human being there and the dead. They're going to get the the revelation of Christ also. I'm going to reveal him to us. It's going to happen. Your dream is going to end. Your desire for success and fame and accomplishing your career goal is going to end. It has to. Because my son is now going to come there and establish my government there for eternity. And there's no other government dream, intention, thought, period, that there will exist other than what I have set forth and decreed already from the foundations of the world. Now, my son is the is salvation. You need to be in him in order to be saved. And how you get there is that I, the father is saying, am doing it by my grace unto your soul. Forget about your family, your other people. And I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about you. I am trying to get you to come to my son. Period. It doesn't matter what the sermon was last week unless they're talking about what I'm telling you about, which is my son. That's what God is saying to the human soul. We're going in the ministries and you can hear it. You can use there's people that's listening right now that knows he's saying he's lying. That's wrong. That's not true. But you keep your carnality. Well, I'm just going to sit here. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to give amens. I'm going to give the amens and, and clap and say, yeah, that was good. Can't wait till next Sunday to see what, what else is good instead of him knowing that his son is the goodness of the father. He's the good. He's the goodness for your soul. We just show, showed it last night. He's the nutriment, the water, the bread, the meat of your soul, the nutriment for your soul. This, the Father has commissioned this. Look at, the, look at this definition. This makes sense now. This makes sense. You are saved by grace, not by believing. Believing is a precursor for you to decide to accept the under the the news about the father sending his son if you decide to believe that he will then begin to give you grace and strengthen your soul to a conviction and then commit to follow after his son you are now flowing in the true purpose of the father with that when you do that inside because you got carnality that's pulling you Oh wait, let's let's see here. Let's see who's who's anybody there. Anybody, if you guys are there, somebody say something. Post it up. Hit the like button on the Facebook Live, YouTube. Thank you. Yeah, I got a viewer on YouTube. Yes, you're gonna let something pull you out of the one purpose, which is the soul in you that the father wants to save and have for eternity you're going to let something deter you away oh okay i see i see we've got uh jennifer is there harita milana how are you rosario is back hey how you doing vil 
Allison, how you doing? This is the way that you're saved. Are you truly saved? That's what you have to ask yourself and answer. I don't feel saved. Well, believe me, I know that I am. I know it. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't believe it. I don't doubt it. I know it. It's a knowing. And he's going to do something to let you know that you are. That without doubt, because your carnality is going to doubt you all the time. It's going to make you doubt and fight against it. But he says, no, you, you remember when I gave it to you, right? Yeah. What else do you need? There you go. Yeah, you got it. Lord. Yeah. And you speak my son. You speak him. You refuse to be. Last night was an eye opener for me. Because it says a conviction. You refuse to be. I, I refuse to be moved to anything else anymore. I'm not. I don't care about religion and what that person is doing and what who's doing what country and what war started. It doesn't matter. There's only one that is the focus, and that's him. It's only one. And the father is telling us by this influence. Okay, so this is how this should read. Look at this. It's like, okay, uh, here it is. For by the influence upon your soul of God the Father turning you to Christ, keeping and strengthening you in Christ's faith, knowledge, and affection, and, and kindling you to Christ's virtues, are you made whole are you free from the penalty of the judgment the messianic judgment that's on the way are you free from that that's why you don't stand before the judgment seat of works and and that it talks about in revelation you don't stand before that because you have his spirit in you and you belong to him and you got it while you were in the human body your soul was inside this flesh through faith then where does that faith come it comes from we just seen it in the definition of grace and it's not look at this see so here here's how that's why we need to examine ourselves it's not of yourselves <laughs> it's right it's not because you're doing understanding the bible radio on facebook live and youtube and google plus no it's not because you did that and been doing it for years and years and years no it's not. It's the gift of the Father. And he is the one who has saved us and called us with a holy calling. Oh, that's, un that's without sin, holy calling. No, it's an uncommon. You can't find this nowhere else only but with him. Not according to our works. I, I, I worship on the Sabbath. I don't, I don't do nothing on the Sabbath. I keep it. I keep the Sabbath. I don't even use the bathroom on the Sabbath. No. I keep the law. Oh, wow. It is not of your work. I go to, I go to, I go to a higher living, learning, kingdom hall, God of kingdom, word, uh, faith, uh, uh, changing, life, uh, promise, church. It is not <laughs> it is not of your works. It is not of what you're doing. But it is according to the Father's own purpose and influence upon your soul, turning you to Christ, keeping and strengthening you in Christ's faith, knowledge, affection, and killing and kindling you to the exercise of his son's virtues. That's what that grace means. We just saw it. Okay, if you want to see the whole thing, look, look. Okay, God's grace, God, God's that which affords joy, pleasure, delight, sweetness, charms, loveliness, and grace, grace of speech. No, that's the case. Once, once those the, the, the disciples were saved after Christ, after meeting Him, they would have had all. They would have never been hunted after, sought after, persecuted, hated, stoned, beaten, thrown over jail, boiled in oil boiled in oil and uh, if that was the case if that was the real grace to, to, of, of the father and what he's talking about uh, the the part in revelation where it says the antichrist is going to wear out the saints of christ he's going to cut their heads off that that had to be erased so we know that's not the definition but this one clearly states and identifies who it is and what he's doing 
Now, what is due to this influence? The spiritual condition of one governed by the power of divine. This again, merciful kindness of God, which you see, you can't get away from it. You're governed by this. I'm governed because God is in me governing by his spirit. A token or proof of grace is benefit, a gift of grace, bounty, benefit. Thanks for benefit services. That's great. Let's sit down. We got this great feast. Uh, say grace. That's what that means. That's what it's saying here. We always going, we're looking for some money. God giving me, give me some money, God. Give me some, give me some healing. Give me some marriage repair. God, give me, give me some uh, uh, government uh, renewal because they, they are oppressing us. They are oppressing me. Give, give me the, give me the, uh, give me the uh, 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 vengeance on the racism that I just experienced. Give me the vengeance on the, on the hate, on the terrorism. See, see how we do? Look how we do. That's what we, we want. God, now, now we do you, you, my benefit, God. Come on. He says, what about what, I, what I'm doing in your soul? What about that? There it is. It which was given us in who his son before the world began. Look, that's before the world began. It was done. Why aren't they telling us this in the churches and in the ministries and on the social medias? Why? Why are we talking about sin all day and who's going to hell? Why? Why are we talking about God bless America? I don't see America anywhere in the Bible. Oh, it's right here. It's it's in the prophetic. It's right here. Why are we even focused on that? Why not focus on the true, real deal of the Father? Saving your soul. You and me. Post it up, man. Post it. I'm getting excited. I'm sorry. I'm getting emotional here. <laughs> don't be sorry. <laughs> grace. Grace. Who, who did it? How did... Grace... Uh, let's see. How did how did it how did it happen? The true grace. This is God trying to work inside of you, in your mind, to get you to get. Here it is, John yeah. one seventeen. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by who? It came by the scriptures, man. That's how it came. It came by the scriptures. It came by Jesus Christ came by Christ it doesn't come by who's going to hell and who's not it came by his son it didn't come by the law the law is divorced in Jeremiah 3 8 read it it came by his begotten son in human flesh he says I'm going to send down my influence in my son into a baby's body to grow as a man and be sacrificed because it, I, I declare that that's what has to be done in order to bust this spiritual opportunity for the souls to be here with us spreading our knowledge throughout all of creation universe cosmos because your soul is not just going to be out there f flying around in the universe because it wants to to go and see what this is and over here and what that is no that soul is going to be used to have his knowledge in to speak with other spiritual rulers and potentates for eternity, teaching them his knowledge. That's what he wants our souls for. That's uh, Ephesians 3 verses 9 through 11. A mystery that has not been told to anyone in the Old Testament. No, oh, go ahead, Helena. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I know you wanted to. Oh, you no, wanted to you're fine. I was just going to say, um, Paul said it best um, when it comes to our part in this in Philippians 3, verse 7 through 11. I don't have King James Version, so. All right. No, I'll get, I'll get it. I'll get it. Yeah, I'll get it. Hold on one sec. I got to get back on that. Okay. You said Philippians what? 3, 7 Three. through 11. But things, but what things were gained to me, all earthly, those I counted lost for Christ, yea, doubtless, 
no doubt. And I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung, garbage, rubbish, manure, defecation, boo-boo, that I may win Christ and be found in him, in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through, through, there it is again, the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God, and look at it, by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. That's it. That's tight. Yeah. And then in Hebrews 7 and 25, he explains that God is able to save completely. I think in the King James Version, he knew, he used the word uttermost, uttermost. 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 Wherefore, he is able also to save. He is them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. Salvation is a being. It's his son. Mm -hmm. Wherefore salvation is able to, uh, is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto the father by him. Seeing he never liveth to make, he, he I'm sorry, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them he's the one doing it this is the salvation it's not oh my goodness this is the way that's why the father's even bringing you to him look at the grace definition he's bringing you to the one that saves the one who is he's bringing you Helena O'Leary O'Leary she jumped in She's there. Good to see you back. Good to see you. You guys can share this, like it, mm -hmm. love it, be mad, angry. Post up your comments, questions right now. Post it up. Post it up. What you got? Are you truly saved is the question. Are you truly saved by the influence upon your soul? Turning you to him. It's only one focus and that's his son. And he that is you saw it in the definition. You saw it. He's, and you also saw it in the example of uh, that Philippians 3 where Paul focused only on Christ. Because uh, when you say, are you truly saved? And then, you know, we, we always have to check ourselves. Are, are, you know, am I truly saved? Do I have a spirit? Or am I focusing on him? You know, this whole uh, piece here where Paul says he counted all done. He, he counted as he's done. Made him the focus. All the, Everything of the world, you know, he's counted as, as garbage. All, all for the knowledge of Christ. Like, you know, he's, that's, that's in that definition where we were talking about yesterday, you know, being sold out. And you were talking about uh, knowing that you're saved. Knowing. Like when you say, I know. I know. I know that I'm saved. Well, this, he knew that he, he know that he's saved here. Uh, he's counting everything trash for the knowledge of Christ. He's, he's not he don't even, want nothing but Christ. Yes. yes. That's what he's doing. Because he knows. And, and his this life was, a, was not great and glorious he either. He killed I mean, his, Christians, you know, man. He has eternal life. And, his, and he, he, he living him. a pretty he hard, him. miserable life there. Yeah. Okay. He killed him. No, he, he, yeah. his whole life wasn't miserable, but... Well, no, I'm saying Maybe inwardly, through the but, trials and the tribulations, yeah, you know, yeah. a, a lot of Christians think, you know, you have a lot of people in church on the pulpit that tell you, you know, you're going through this and you're going through that. You know, you got to have, I, I've even had 
pastors tell me, you know, you 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 going through all of this and you you know, you live for God and you believe in God and all this, but yet you live like this and you don't have a house and a and a car and all this. Yeah. It's not about that, you know. All right, it's not about that. As you can see. Even in the definition, it doesn't even say that. It says nothing about no. those things. It's talking all about God turning you to him. And look, okay, even if they're talking about a grace for you to get a healing or you to get a promotion or whatever, whatever have you, they're talking about grace. That's what it is. If you're seeing this right now, why don't you say, you know what? Bump that other stuff. Bump that. I need this. Because without right. this, without this, I am none of his influence my soul father you want some new prayers there you go there's one right there and so influence my soul turn me to your son turn me to him well how about you know uh 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 you, you know uh this one well how about uh you know uh god be pleased father be pleased reveal your son in me What about that? Reveal your son in me. You did it for Paul. Reveal it for me. Reveal him in me. Give me your son. I'm telling you. I mean, if, if you if somebody truly believes this, they're going to come to God with such an intensity. Because they're not getting this, his influence upon him, uh, I mean, upon their soul. They, they, they're going to say, oh, no, I got to. You talking about breakthrough. Let T.D. Jakes come to your town and do another breakthrough sermon. You go down there, girl, you're going to come out of there motivated for breakthrough or whatever T.D. Jakes talked about because he's not talking about breakthrough. The one breakthrough that you need to get is right here. You he you come with such an intensity in prayer to God about this. I need your son. You go, you talking about you ain't going to be all, you know, on your knees. You know how formal we get, you know. Father in heaven, oh, mighty father. Oh, Holy Father. Oh, Father of all creation. You know, how, no, no. You, you that, that intensity will get so great in you. You will get up. You'll start moving around. You will say, look, I need, I, I need, I'm telling you. It's such a, oh, it, it'll grow in you so much. People will be calling you. Facebook will be going off. You won't even be interested in that I'm not interested I need your son in me it will be an urgency imperativeness in you that you will begin to crave even while you're sleeping you're turning over father give me your son right back to sleep wake up in the morning Brushing your teeth. It's dwelling in you. You at work doing your job, but in your heart, in your core of your mind, your soul is now crying out. I need your spirit. You take a break, go to the bathroom, you get in a stall by yourself. Give me your spirit. God, I need this. I refuse <laughs> anything. I mean, you be quiet. I need you. I need your spirit. You'll be, I'm telling you, people, you'll be in rush hour going home. People be looking over in your car. You'll be in there with the windows rolled up, clocking off. Needing him to save your soul by his influence upon you, turning you to his son. Turning you. What does you have? I'm about to get out of here, man. I'm not going to hold you guys for the whole hour. Well, we got 10 <laughs> minutes left. What do you have? Anything on this? Maybe you need the hugs. I usually give the hugs. I just was so intense on this. I forgot. There's your hugs. I got to give you hugs, man. What do you have on this? Are you truly saved is the question. Are you saved by his grace through faith? Forget about died for your sins. Believe in your heart. Now you say you can erase that. Because Jesus, we just showed it. He said you might be saved. Why? Because he was not supposed to tell you about the influence upon your soul from my father. 
because I got somebody set up already that's going to do that. And that person was Paul, that he taught him this to tell us exactly how you're saved. And it is not. And I was wrong. I thought that that's what it was because that's what they taught me in church. That was not it. There's people that's going to come to Jesus thinking and knowing that there's, I just know God, I, I did these works in your name. You, you missed, you missed what we told Paul and taught him that it is not by your works. And in Matthew seven, all you talking to me about is your works, what you did. And it's not by that. It's not by your works that you're saved. It is by my father's influence upon your soul, turning you to me, keeping you in me, and working out the exercise of my virtues. That is how it's done, and that's how it's always been done. Because my father declared it, and he commissioned it, and you saw it, about this idiot fool big head dude over here that I just let in Ron you saw it and you what did you do you didn't even consider if it was true you went and ran probably to someone else who's some type of scholar or something and you wanted to confirm what he said was true and whatever that that dude told you that's what you went on but you looking right at it and you still wouldn't accept it. So my father removed his influence. He took it away. Matthew 7 is where they, they, they mention all the things that they do. Many will come unto me in that day and, and, uh, and say, Lord, Lord, we have we not prophesied. That's a work in your name. Have we not done this? And in thy name have cast out devils. Have we not done that? And in thy name... Uh, done many wonderful works have we not done that and he says then I will profess I'm telling the truth undeniable unto them I never knew you depart from me because what you worked was iniquity that's what you worked oh sin they broke the law no that's not what he said he said iniquity and I'm starting to understand that iniquity is not speaking the true Christ. You, first, you didn't even want to follow in my father's will. That's the first part of it. You're not following my father's will, which is what? Me being in you. You're not even accepting his influence upon your soul. Aligning up with his purpose that you be in me. No, you want to go back to Ten Commandments, which I divorced in Jeremiah 3. 8. You don't want it. So what do I do? What do I need to do? I, by, by my father's authority, I must tell you, I'll see you when I free you. Which is never, because eternally, you're, you're away from me. You did not want to do my father's will, which is that he saves you by his influence, turning you to me, keeping you in me, and strengthening you in me. You didn't want that. No, you wanted, you wanted to make it through the apocalypse. So that you could come out on the earth, I guess, and, and see how everything is and, 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 and try to grow more crops and, and live right. But nothing and no one is going to make it through that. Zero. Because every soul is required. Um, uh, 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 what does it say? Man's soul is required of him. It's going to be required of you. It's got to come out of that body. Period. Mm -hmm. No, no, you wanted to run after Mr popular pastor that's what you wanted to be in a crowd you want to be uh, in a group you want to be accepted by men that's what you want you want to try to find a church home that you like that's what you wanted you didn't want this you didn't want the grace that he sent me to give which is my influence upon your soul you didn't want that but you gotta ask yourself are you truly saved Teresa Riley Susan hey how you doing glad you jumped in just a little roll call yep you can share it man you can share it like it it's totally up to you guys you can share it on your own walls you can post comment it's totally up to you it'll be here this will be here as long as Facebook live is there and it's on my wall my Facebook is there 
it'll be on there. This video will be there. You'll be able to see it. Come back and study it. Pause it. Rewind it. Look back. Send messages, questions, whatever you need. Because listen, you got to ask yourself, am I truly saved? Is it just because I believe he died for my sins? These people believed also. These people. And he says they're going to be there. They're going to say this to him in those last days. Many will. He's good. They're going to say this and he's going to say no. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. You, you, you were never saved. I never knew who you were. I am salvation and I'm not. I don't know you. Depart from me. Because you refused to turn to my to me because my father was influencing you to do it you refused you wanted to it's got to be something else no it's not according to the father now no it's not I'm not asking you how much money you made did you fulfill your dreams did, how many times did you go to church did you read your bible every day did you get up and recite that psalm scripture did you did you change your atmosphere every morning? Did you get up at three o'clock in the morning and pray to 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 uh, combat the spirit of the demons, the spiritual warfare? Did you do all that? He's not going to ask that. He's not asking none of that. He's going to know exactly who you are because he's going to be in you. And when you come, when your soul comes, he already knows you belong with me. That's the first resurrection. Check your revelation out. It'll tell you. The first resurrection is what you want to be in. If you're in that resurrection. The second one is the one you don't want to be in. Because those are the ones that don't have his spirit. So that's how he, you know he knows who's saved and who isn't. There's not going to be any question about it. Period. Anything else you got on this, Alina? Oh, no, sir. You're yeah, excellent. I wonder what you guys got. I don't see anything. I don't see anything. Nobody's saying nothing. It's all right. That's all right. One day you, um, hopefully you guys will interact with me, man. Let me know that you guys are there. We're going to talk about this. Get it together. Other than that, I'm out of here. It's a done deal. This is in-depth study of the Christ, the propitiation, the begotten son, the law, the judge, the ruler, the standard, the Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, the one, the true Jesus Christ. Here on Understanding the Bible, radio, on-screen study, Facebook Live, YouTube Live, Google Plus Live, on-screen Undeniable facts of scripture.